Even if you suck at balancing your Crane M2S gimbal, at the end of this video, you are going to be able to balance it in under 60 seconds. If you've just bought a gimbal or if this is your first gimbal, it is not unusual to feel overwhelmed and daunted by the balancing process. And you might even find yourself wondering, why did I even buy this thing? And am I going to use it because it is such a hassle to balance it? I promise you, everybody feels like that with their first gimbal and it doesn't take long and you will get pretty quick at it. So this is how the gimbal is going to come out of the box and we just need to unlock the axes and we swing them into place. I should probably turn this around. Okay, so this is going to be our starting point for balancing our gimbal. Now, I like to take the, the bottom plate off and actually attach it to the camera first. That's sort of my way of doing it. You can actually have it on the gimbal and attach it, but this is the way I like to do it. And so I've got the bottom plate on there. Now I'm going to take the lens cap off. You need the camera set up exactly the way that you are going to have it when you're actually using it. So at this stage, I'm going to put this thing, say, at 18 millimeters. That's where I'm going to use it at. And then I am going to click it into the plate. Now, if you are using a cord, the camera control cable, you need to plug that in and plug it into the camera. Uh, with this Canon camera that I've got, the camera control cable goes on this side, the side that sort of butts up against the motor. That's fine, you plug it in there, and then you will loosen this up and slide it over until the camera or the cord, if you've got it in there, is pressing up against the side of that motor. And what we're doing is we're just trying to keep this as compact as possible and we're getting a third point of contact to kind of brace the camera in its position here because any amount of play can kind of make this loose, can cause some vibrations and cause some problems with both balancing and using the gimbal. So right now I'm not using the cord. Now you may or may not choose to use the cord. That's really just a matter of personal preference. For me, I generally don't use the cord because that's just one more thing for me to unhook when I'm using the gimbal and I'm taking the camera on and off because generally I'm not using the gimbal all, the whole time. I'll use it for a little while, then I'll sort of shoot handheld and then I'll go back. That's just one more thing to click on and off. The other thing is I like to use a camera strap. Now I don't have any on this one right now, but if you're using a camera strap, you want a removable camera strap that just has the little, little dangly bits and you plug them in. I actually have a very budget friendly one that I've been using for years that I use with my Canon M50 and I will link that in the description down below because you definitely want a removable camera strap. One thing I will say about gimbal footage that a lot of people don't really realize or think about is that a little bit of gimbal footage as part of any given video project goes a long way. So if you are hiking or doing some sort of outdoor adventure ventures or some sort of travel thing that you're doing, you don't necessarily have to walk around and use the gimbal the whole time. If you just get a few tracking shots, a few movement shots, a few sort of reveal shots, you can mix that into your footage. It's really gonna upgrade the way that your footage feels and you can actually just put the gimbal in the bag and shoot handheld. I will also point out that people think, well, just shooting with the gimbal is gonna get me the most cinematic footage. And that's kind of true, but if you watch any Hollywood movie nowadays, a huge percentage of the footage is shot handheld intentionally. It is part of the way and the style that videos are made now. Actually having a video that has a mix of, of definitely feeling handheld and some sort of movement in it, as well as gimbal footage, is really going to give you the most complete feel. And it's gonna make your video project or travel travel film feel the most complete. So don't feel like because you have a gimbal, you have to use it all the time. All right, enough of that. Let's get into the balancing. Now, what I've done, I've got it set up just the way I'm gonna use it. Now, this is important. If you have a flip screen on your camera and you plan on having it out because you're gonna vlog and look at yourself, or you wanna turn it around like this and have the back of it uh, free from the motor possibly, then you need to flip it out. So have the camera set up exactly like you plan on using it when it's on the gimbal. So I'm gonna say that we're gonna be vlogging with this. So I'm gonna turn this around so it's out like that. Now the first thing that we're gonna do is we are going to balance it front and back. So we are going to release this axis and we are gonna move this until we have it balanced. Now, one important thing about this, and it's just small movements, and sometimes it can be hard to get the smallest movement. All right, that's pretty close. Now, when you're doing this, at times you'll feel it tilt forward a little bit or tilt back a little bit, but stay. There's the electronic and magnets in that motor, 
And in a perfect world, you kind of want it sitting between the two. Sometimes it'll tip forward and it'll be just sitting on the edge of one or tip back on the edge of the other. In a perfect world, it's sitting between the two. It hasn't leaned forward and then stopped or leaned back and then stopped. But to be honest, it's not the end of the world either way, but I think I've got a pretty good balance there. So we're starting with this axis, the front and back axis. Now I'm gonna hold it down while I sort of push that in. Now pushing that, pushing down the lever can actually change the balance a bit because you do have a little bit of weight in that lever. All right now we have balanced that axis, but we're not done with this axis. If we go like this, we wanna point the camera up towards the ceiling and we want that camera to stay. Well now it just has luck would have it that is staying. So that is balanced. But I will show you what it looks like when it's not. I'll move this down. So if you put it up and it's going like that, then we need to sort of move it back until we get this thing so it'll stay. So we slide this around. And the first few times you do it, this is, seems a bit daunting and a little bit dicky. And sometimes you just have to brace it a little bit. And we're getting pretty close there. Small movements. And that's good. Okay. So that's like that. That's good, that's good. Okay, so now that is our first axis balance. Now, the next one is our rear roll motor. We're gonna unlock that and we're gonna see it's tipping to the side there. So we just move this across until we've got a balance there. I'd say that's pretty good. We're gonna lock that down. Now this next one, you unlock this and when you tilt it forward, we just want it to kind of stay in position and it's actually doing that. So that is actually properly balanced. Now, I'll just show you what it looks like if that part isn't balanced. I'll put it way out, I'll put it forward, and if I push it forward and back, it's going to swing around. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna tilt it forward into the right a little bit or back into the left a little bit. And when we do that, we see it swung forward, and we do this, it swings back. And what we're gonna do is we're going to move this around until that just stays put. Now it's turning back a little bit. And that's pretty good. This, this axis isn't super sensitive, all right? It's not super sensitive. So this is probably the least important one to get perfect. All right, now we have that balance. The other thing I should mention, if you're using like a, a wireless microphone system, that needs to be on. If you're using a vlogging mic, that needs to be on. Everything needs to be on, including any audio stuff you're using. All right, now we're gonna boot it up. All right, we're in pan follow mode and now you can see we're perfectly balanced, no issues there whatsoever. All right, now we're gonna try to repeat that whole process and do it in under 60 seconds. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to do this, the pressure's on, maybe I will use a timer, let's see. I could always time it for you guys, but let's go uh, timer, stopwatch, here we go. Oh, the pressure's on, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this or not. Okay, here we go, start. Oh, off to a bad start already. Okay, get that into position. That's good. Oh, I'm gonna be nowhere near it. I'm 10 seconds down already. That, I know that's gonna be over here somewhere. 17 seconds in. <laughs> that's in. Flip the screen out. All right, that axis is good. That axis is good because that hasn't changed. 27 seconds. I'm gonna slide that over. Slide that, that's good. Oh, actually gotta unlock this axis, 40 seconds. <laughs> oh, that's a little bit, a little bit out. I'm gonna move this back, 47. Oh, that's good, all right, turn it on, 51, 53. Balanced and on, all right, under 60 seconds. All right, we did it. All right, we did it, under 60 seconds. All right, if I can do it, you can do it. Even though this M2S gimbal is a budget-friendly gimbal, it is definitely something you can get pro results with. And on this channel, that's what I'm all about, getting the best results in photo and video with the gear that you can afford or the gear that you already have. So if that's something you're into, be sure to subscribe to the channel. We'll see you on the next one.